Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. Today in this video, I am going to discuss about the spin angular momentum and total angular momentum. This video is in continuation with our previous video in which I have discussed about the orbital angular momentum. In this video, we are going to discuss spin angular momentum, gyromagnetic ratio, total angular momentum, vector model of atom. This vector model suggests the combination of vector L and vector S and this gives a picture of atom like this. Let's start with the video. Since in the spectrum of alkali metals, a doublet spectral lines are observed. Secondly, when the atom is placed in the external magnetic field, splitting of Atomic spectral lines in external magnetic field is observed, which is termed as Zeeman effect. So, these are the drawbacks which cannot be explained only on the basis of considering orbital angular momentum. To explain these drawbacks, Ford Smith and Uhlenberg in 1925 suggest that an electron must be looked upon as a charged sphere spinning about its own axis. Here, it is the electron which is spinning about its own axis. Thus, it has an intrinsic angular moment vector S and therefore it has intrinsic magnetic moment here. This is the intrinsic magnetic moment and this is also represented by mu S known as spin magnetic moment. So, this Spin angular momentum has its magnitude as we have discussed in my previous video of orbital angular momentum. So, this total spin angular momentum, to, why total? Because if we have more than one unpaired electron, then it will be the sum of all the spins that are present in the atom. So, this S is equal to square root of S, S plus 1 h upon 2 pi. This h upon 2 pi is also represented as h cross. So, this is its magnitude and since we are having spin of an electron is plus or minus half, so on putting the value of spin in this equation, we will get square root of 3 upon 2 into h upon 2 pi. So, this is total spin angular momentum and its component about g axis s z or s g it is equal to m s h cross here m s it has value 2 s plus 1 means plus s 2 minus s values so spin of an electron either plus half or minus so how many if i put this s 1 by 2 here then I will get two values. So, ms has two values corresponding to s, spin of electron. And therefore, its g component is having two different orientations, plus half h cross and minus half h cross. This is experimentally verified by the thin garle experiment. Here, in this experiment, we are having beam of electrons which is passed through the inhomogeneous magnetic field. Applied magnetic field is in G direction, it is its axis and here del B upon del Z is the rate of change of magnetic field in G direction. Classically, it is supposed that we should have this type of peak, but observation has been drawn there. It has two separate peaks. One is 4 plus half and the other one is 4 minus half for up spins and downs. In this manner, we can have Sz or G component or the orientation of this spin angular moment equal to plus half h cross and minus half h cross. Now coming to the gyromagnetic ratio of spin and orbital angular moment. So, what is called gyromagnetic ratio for electron spin? This gyromagnetic ratio is the ratio of magnetic moment to the spin angular moment. Similarly, the gyromagnetic ratio for electron orbital motion is equal to mu L magnetic moment of orbital magnetic moment and orbital angular moment. We are having here mu S is equal to minus 2 E upon 2 MC vector S. 
This I have discussed in detail in my previous video of orbital angle. This 2 is considered as GS which is spin G factor and equal to 2. So spin G factor is 2 for the electron spin. So here what we have this gyromagnetic ratio for electron spin is 2 times to the gyromagnetic ratio for electron orbital motion which is equal to 1. This you can understand by this figure. Here we are having an electron which is orbiting about the nucleus of the atom and at the same time it is spinning on its own axis. So here this is the orbital angular momentum and this is the spin angular momentum. And as a result of these orbital and spin angular momentum they are having their magnetic moment. So here this is orbital magnetic moment. And here it is spin magnetic moment. And these magnetic moments I have shown here mu L upon vector L is equal to 1. So here mu L is equal to gamma gyromagnetic which is equal to mu L upon L from this equation. Right? But for spin it is 2 times. These are represented over here. And here this vector is 2 times of this vector. This is Already we have discussed in our previous video here mu l is equal to this much vector l is this on putting the value of l in this equation we are getting the orbital magnetic moment equal to under root l l plus 1 mu b where mu b is equal to this much in CGS and MKS units. And here g l is equal to orbital g factor which is equal to 1 here. It in the same way, we are having spin magnetic moment equal to minus Gs this much and here Gs is a spin G factor is, which is equal to 2. So, on putting the value of L which we have calculated in our previous slide. So, this is equal to square root of 3 divided by 2 H cross. Right. So, on summarizing all these. So, here mu S is equal to square root of 3 mu B. Here. 2 cancel out by this 2 and rest is equal to mu b. Mu b is equal to th upon 4 pi mc. So, this is how one can calculate the magnetic moment for spin angular moment and spin angular momentum value and its g component. Three things which we have discussed here. Now, coming to the spin orbit coupling or total angular momentum. So, guys, first I'll just bring to your notice that what is called total angular momentum. So total angular momentum is the combination of orbital and spin angular momenta. Here this momenta is a plural word and this momentum is a singular word. So total angular momentum is the combination of orbital and spin of its electrons. Since angular momentum is a vector quantity, here L is vector quantity, S is vector quantity. Therefore, the total angular momentum will also be a vector quantity which is obtained by the addition of orbital and spin angular moment vector. So, this leads to the vector model of atom. Now, I'll just explain it over here. Let us consider an atom with one electron having magnitude of orbital angular moment this much. This is the magnitude. We have already discussed all such things previously. Here this is the orientation or G component of this orbital angular moment and which has values ML is equal to plus L to minus L and similarly we are having a spin angular momentum which is having equal to this much magnitude similar to this and it is also having SZ component which is the orientation and since MS has two values plus half and minus half therefore we are having two SZ values for this. So this is what we have discussed previously also. Orbital angular momentum in magnitude in orient. In angular momentum its magnitude its orientation. The values depend on the magnetic quantum number. Now coming to the total angular momentum. So total angular momentum is the combination of L and S vector. Here this J, J is the total angular momentum. It's a vector quantity and it is equal to the sum of the L and S. Means 
ऑर्बिटल एंगुलर मोमेंटम प्लस स्पिन एंगुलर मोमेंट राइट हेयर जे इज अगेन हैविंग द सेम वैल्यू अंडर रूट जे जे प्लस वन एच अपॉन टू पर एंड इट्स जेड कंपोनेंट एम जे जेड इज इक्वल टू एम जे एच नाउ जे इज द इनर क्वांटम नंबर एंड एम जे इज द मैग्नेटिक क्वांटम नंबर ऑफ दिस जे एम जे हैज वैल्यूज प्लस जे टू माइनस जे डिफरिंग बाय वन अप टू माइनस जे जे जेड और जे जी इज इक्वल टू एल जेड प्लस माइनस एस जेड हेयर दीज आर द स्केलर क्वांटिटी the values of these depends on the mj ml and ml since the maximum value for mj is equal to g ml is equal to l and ms is equal to s so j has maximum value l plus minus s right now coming to the vector model of the atom how we are going to calculate the total angular moment by combination of spin angular momentum and orbital angular momentum for one electron say we are having the angular momenta of the atomic electron s and l h is spin angular momentum l is orbital angular momentum which are interact magnetically and this is known as spin orbit interaction right so here j is equal to l plus s how we are going to understand this type of vector sum so suppose this is our orientation about the g axis so this is our vector l orbital angular momentum and this is our spin angular moment so by the addition of these two the resultant which we get over here is equal to this round arrow and this is equal to vector j means total angular moment if we are having the another relationship j is equal to l minus s then how we are going to represent it in vector mode so this is having vector l this is our s which is in opposite direction l and by the resultant of these two we get j so what observation you have made over here here j is greater than vector l and here j is less than so here j is having high value and here j is having low value so while we are writing the term symbols and or energy terms then you will understand the importance of this you can also understand since these are interact magnetically so here once l and s both are in same direction then their magnetic moments are in same direction which is unfavorably interact whereas when vector l has opposite direction to the spin angular moment then their magnetic moments have opposite direction which is magnetically favorable interaction so in this manner it is the stable configuration so in this way we are having two different j values so the different values of j that can arise for a given value of l label Labels of a term symbol, except l is equal to zero. L is equal to zero means if we are having l is equal to zero, then in this case we are getting j is equal to plus half, and in this case we are getting minus half. And if we do the modulus, then j will have the same value that is half. I hope you understand this vector model and how these magnetic moments interact with each other to give the different values of j and these different values of j that is why the observations doublet spectral lines observed in the spectrum of alkali matter now coming to the total angular moment so first i'll just explain this when these spin and orbital angular momentum interacts magnetically they exert the torque on each other and these internal torques do not change the magnitude of the vector l and vector s but causes them to process uniform here j so what we have seen in our previous video we, there we have discussed the orbital angular moment so that orbital angular moment presses about the applied external magnetic field value and it has certain value 
But here in this case, since S and L both interact magnetically with each other, so they both exert torque on each other and therefore they process about this J for total angular moment. How this J comes here? So in some of the attacks, you will see this is our orbital angular moment. This is our S and this is the projection of S. So this projection of S, if I draw this blue line over here, I will get the resultant K over here, right? So in some of the attacks, you will see this cone over here and this cone over here. So in either way you can draw, important thing is that you understand what is going on. So orbital angular momentum is there, spin angular momentum is there. Both interact magnetically and they produce a resultant K. Since they are interacting magnetically, so they exert torque on each other and because of that torque, they process about the K. And because of that precession, they change their direction but not change the magnitude of this theta. Right? So, this is what we have discussed in detail in our previous video. So, it is mandatory to see that video to understand in a better manner. Now, if the atom is in free space, no external torque is acting on it, therefore its magnitude and direction both are conserved. And the angle between L and S remains invariant from the cosine rho. So, angle will not change. Right? So, that can be calculated from there on putting the value of this J, L and S. Right, so we can calculate cos L and S. Now coming to the next concept, when this atom is placed in the external applied magnetic field, when the atom is placed in the external magnetic field, which is represented by this vector B, and this is applied in the G direction. The J, that is total angular momentum, starts processing about this, external magnetic field. As a result of this L and S, we will get the J and on placing the atom in the applied external magnetic field, it will start processing. At the same time, when this J is processing about this B, L and S continues processing about this J. The discrete orientation of J relative to B involves slightly different energy. And that give raise to the anomalous Gman effect, which is in agreement with the experimental value. So this is, we can fully understand the concept of three important points. First, orbital angular momentum. Second, spin angular momentum. Third, total angular momentum. They are behavior in the applied external magnetic field. So I hope guys you understand the concept which I have discussed in these two videos. So in the next video I am going to discuss about the spectroscopic term symbol. If you like this video please subscribe my channel. Give me a thumbs up. And thank you guys. Thanks for watching.